I'm Jessica. And I'm Jessica. And together we are the Wine Mouths. Welcome back to our series, What's in the Bag? We are officially halfway through our bag mm -hmm. and we are on to our fourth wine. My goodness. So we picked six wines for North Carolina Wine Month and we are um, drinking our way through them as we talk about the wines and why we love them so much. Mm -hmm. So. Without further ado, Let's see what the fourth one's gonna be. Our fourth bottle is the Bella Misto from Raffaldini. <laughs> All right, let's dive right in, shall we? We shall. I love our job, by the way. <laughs> this has just been so much fun, getting to revisit some of our favorite wines, some places we've been together. So, fun to relive. Especially yes. this one. This mm -hmm. is one of our favorite wineries, and this is Raffaldini. Raffaldini is located in Rhonda, North Carolina, which is in the Swan Creek ABA, which is in the Yakin Valley ABA. Mm -hmm. And they have a beautiful tasting room and vineyard, so there you'll think you're in a Tuscan villa. It's just gorgeous up there, and the great views and great people, great everything. Yeah. And this is one of the wineries um, when we have people visiting from out of town, we always take them there. It's mm -hmm. It's a good way for people to see not only the wine quality in North Carolina, but also a beautiful venue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they just put out some really great wines. They focus on Italian varietals. There are a few other French grapes in the mix, and they, those are going to be used mainly for blending mm -hmm. and other purposes. But um, the owner, Jay Raffaldini, is Italian, and he was looking high and low all over the country for a place to put a vineyard. And he finally settled on Rhonda, North Carolina. And you might wonder, why, why? Rhonda? <laughs> um, why Rhonda? Why Rhonda? Population's probably like 45 people, you know? So it's not, not necessarily what you would think, but it's actually very similar in climate to Italy. So they can grow a lot of the same groups there that they can and, grow in Italy. Yeah, and their tagline is the Chianti of the Carolinas, mm -hmm. so. And it, it really fits. They do a great job. So let's go ahead and taste <laughs> this one, shall we? Yes. Give it a good swirl. Yeah. Definitely getting a lot of the oak notes. So like the vanilla. Mm -hmm. Some red fruit too. I get some mm -hmm. raspberry. Cherry. Still getting that vanilla. Cranberry. Mm -hmm. Has very high acid. Mm -hmm. Kind of medium tannin. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. Um, middle of the road, mm -hmm. medium body, but good acid. So this one would be really good with, with food with the yeah. acidity in it. Absolutely. And there's a yellow jacket trying to get in on that. <laughs> So, as this yellow jacket tries to leave us alone, this wine is called Bella Misto, which is Italian for beautiful mix. So it's actually a blend. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not sure specifically what grapes they use to make the blend. It's not posted, and we don't remember from our <laughs> tasting notes uh, when we went. We earlier. couldn't decipher our notes either. <laughs> <laughs> but we know it's a blend, and we know that it's going to have some Italian grapes in it. And um, probably some French blenders as well. Yeah, so we thought we'd use it as a jumping off point to talk about blends in general. Because historically, all wine was mm -hmm. blends. So, you know, back in the day, they planted a vineyard and grapes were intermixed with grapes. And they picked the grapes and they mm -hmm. turned into wine and it was what it was. So everything was grown together, produced together. It was all just one big blend from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then along the way, they started, just through history, they started focusing on single varietals. Of course, there are some famous blends still mm -hmm. done today, like Chianti is a blend, Champagne's another famous blend, um, those are just a couple of examples. Yeah, and I think part of the segue into doing the difference is that they decided with just these natural blends out of the vineyards, it was kind of not consistent mm -hmm. because you didn't know necessarily what the grapes were, and so you couldn't predict the fermentation and how it would taste in the end. So. Mm -hmm. People started picking their grapes and doing the different varietals separately and then blending at the end. Mm -hmm. So now all your blends are probably going to have been done 
after fermentation and after you've treated all the wine separately. Okay. And that's giving the winemaker a chance to kind of show off their artistic, creative side. So you, they've done all the work fermenting the specific individual varietals separately. And then at the end, they get to go in their little tasting lab or what have you and kind of mix and blend and see what's going to work well with others. Probably the best part of winemaking, if yeah. I had to guess. Yeah. We've been known to blend some of our own wines just at home. We may not recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's fun. Uh, anyone can be a blender. <laughs> yeah. There are um, some important things to keep in mind with blending. Um, there are the big things you want to think about are acid, mm -hmm. tannins, the oak that's coming through. Right. Uh, any sweetness if you're looking for that or lack of sweetness if you're trying to get more of a dry. Which that might be more of a white wine kind of blend that you're going to take into account for that, but something to think about. Yeah, the goal of blending is balance. Yeah. So you want all those different pieces to just meld together mm -hmm. and, and make a great balanced wine. So if your Cabernet Franc is very acidic, you may want to blend it with your Sangiovese that's a little less acidic. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe if you don't have the color you're looking for, you can splash a little Petit Bordeaux, mm -hmm. which, you know, is going to help round it out. Um, so there's just a lot of great factors at play with blends but it makes them a fun topic to talk about. And blends are on the rise. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the newest Nielsen studies for wine trends in America, red blends are on the up and up. Absolutely. So everybody's going to the grocery store and wanting a red blend. Yeah. Something that makes us chuckle is when somebody will say to us, oh, I'm really into red blends right now, which is kind of like saying, I like I'm really wine. into wine right now because I mean, what is that? It could be <laughs> what anything. What does that mean? It's red wine. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but it just makes us chuckle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we really enjoy this Rappaldini mm -hmm. um, blend. It's very similar to a Chianti, mm -hmm. so uh, this is a good option if you're familiar with Chianti. This would be a good North Carolina option for yeah. that. Would be very good with a pizza. Mm -hmm. Make me hungry again. So another thing with blends is it's gonna give you a little bit more consistency from year to year. Um, yeah, okay. you're able to recreate kind of the same taste profile mm -hmm. even if the blend itself ends up being a little different. So for instance, this blend, Raffaldini mm -hmm. does every year and so the consumer will want it to taste similar from year to year if they're going right. and picking up a bottle that they recognize. So. Yeah, and I know we're gonna need another bottle after we finish this. Yes, so. for sure. We would highly recommend this 2015 Bella Misto from Apple TV. So it's a good one. Now excuse us while we finish it off. <laughs>